Hey there and welcome to another Factorio tutorial. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be covering the basics of the circuit network for uh, beginners. So this tutorial again is for people who have not really even touched the circuit network. Either it's too daunting or you're just new to the game and uh, you kind of want to just figure out what it does and some very basic things uh, that you can do with it. So what is the circuit network? Uh, this first off is not to be confused with the logistics network. Uh, the logistics network is something that interacts with robots, whereas the circuit network is something that allows you to change the state or operation of something uh, via conditions uh, and doesn't, doesn't really have to do with robots. However, you can connect a logistics network to a circuit network and control some things with that, which I'll show you um, briefly here near the end. So how does this work? This works via wires. You have two wires. You have red wires and green wires. And in terms of their functionality, they are absolutely identical. There's no difference whatsoever. The reason there's two colors is because depending on what you're doing in some setups, you will need two colors so that signals don't get mixed. Uh, for example, uh, a green wire could allow information to be sent while red wire could allow a command signal uh, to be sent or, or vice versa. It doesn't matter what color you use, but that's why you would need two. Uh, because sometimes you need to send information and send a uh, command without them getting mixed. So otherwise, though, they are absolutely identical. Now, what can you connect all to the circuit network? You can connect a lot of stuff. You can connect boxes, inserters, power poles. Um, power poles are mostly just for spanning distances and displaying information, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you can also connect tanks, like storage tanks here. You can also connect robo ports you can connect uh, accumulators and also train stops as well as belts and lights uh, and a couple other things as well we won't go into all of those because some of them are a bit more advanced but we'll start here with inserters and boxes so how do you do this you just take and there's little instructions here you just take a wire doesn't matter what color and you just left click and then left click again to what you want to connect it to and you'll see here there's an actual visual indication of of things being connected and now, if you click on an inserter or a box normally, there's no display. There is a little thing up here for circuit network, but it's not connected. However, once you do connect it, it brings up this panel of information here. So there's m multiple modes of operation. There's none, which just means it doesn't change the entity's behavior at all. Uh, enable, disable, and set stack size, as well as read the hand contents. This is for inserters, obviously. And then your enable condition. And the boxes are just read contents. Okay, so it's just as simple as that. Now, how do you disconnect? This is something that I think a lot of people uh, don't know is you can just disconnect it by placing it again. So again, just left click and left click and that'll disconnect the wire. And it doesn't have to be the uh, same color. Well, actually it does because you, uh, you can connect two separate wires to the same thing. So it doesn't need to be the same color. Uh, but you can just simply place it again and it will disconnect it or you can tear up the item uh, but then you have to replace it. So that's just simply how you connect it. Now, what are some uses for this? And again, this can be used on all boxes, tanks, whatever, and it will show you a little visual indicator uh, when you do connect it. So how can this actually be used? Let's start with a very basic uh, operation you can do with this. I have an assembler set up here and it's making gears. And I've just put a chest here with some iron. And what we're going to do is we're going to control the output of this uh, using a circuit condition to set it so that it will only output a certain amount into this box. Now you could use this guy here to just limit the box. That's certainly an option. But if you want to get a little more refined than that, maybe do a few more things with it. Or if you want something that's not an exact stack size, you know, because this will only work in exact stack sizes. So if you want to say like 75 um, for something or gear wheel stack in 100. So like if you want to say 125 instead of 200, um, this is when a circuit network could come in handy. So if we just go ahead and wire this guy up, again, doesn't matter what color, and I've turned him just so he's not exporting yet. And if we again, click and click, and then now what we do is we go into this enable condition and we want to leave this on enable disable because that's what we want it to do. And we go and click here. Now there's all different kinds of things and this will be a bit overwhelming at first. There's signals and those we won't get into much in this video, um, but then you can choose all the items in the game. So what we want to do is choose the item we're trying to limit, which is gear wheels. And we want to use a less than condition. There's all kinds. There's more than, equal than, less than, or equal than, more than, equal than, etc. Uh, and then we need to set an amount. So we're going to say 
enable this inserter if gear wheels are less than, we'll say, 30. Okay? So if gear wheels at any point are less than 30, enable this inserter. Once it hits 30, or a, well, they won't go above it because the inserter will stop. Once it hits 30, this inserter will stop working. Okay, so if we now turn this, he's gonna work. It's gonna make stuff until we hit 30. And once it does, this will turn off. And this will allow this output to uh, be capped at that amount. And there we go. So this will hold up a little bit in its buffer, but you can see this inserter is now stopped because it's reached its limit. Okay, now you can also do this on the input if you'd like. You could wire this inserter to the output box if you want to limit it on the input side, or you could limit it to the input box if you want to set it via that. Like if you're having some sort of like material shortage or something, and you want to say, you know, if there's less than 100 iron in here, stop working. So I don't know, something like that. You can be creative. There's all kinds of different things you can do with it. Uh, on top of this, you can use lights uh, as little indicators. So if we take a wire, Again, it doesn't matter if it's red because they're not connected to the same entity. So that's that's when you need the two colors when they're connected to the same entity, like the inserter. Um, but we should be able to just use red wire here and connect this. And this guy, uh, we can now enable, disable. So what we're gonna do is just use this as a little indicator. And again, gear wheels. And we're just gonna say if gear wheels are more than, say, 25, turn this on. And that, that can just be a little indicator. If you're just walking by in your factory, you can just look and be like, oh, okay, cool, that box is full. Uh, you could set it to exactly what you want. If you want it to be exactly 30 based on this condition that you set the inserter to, you could do that as well. Uh, now you can also set colors, and this is gonna require a combinator. We're not gonna get into the combinators really at all this uh, episode aside from the constant combinators, because these are by far the simplest of the three that you can get. And the constant combinator outputs constant circuit network signals. Okay, so this one is very straightforward. This allows you to go in here and simply select an output. And you can do all kinds of things with this, but it's uh, very easy to use in general. So again, we'll just connect a wire to that. And now we can choose a color, let's say green. And we just need to use colors, and there we go. So this thing is now telling this light to be green. So this is, you know, maybe a little more appropriate when it's full, it's green. Uh, when it's empty, it's off, or you could have it be red when it's empty. Um, you would have to uh, do a little bit more circuit network, which we won't go into here. But uh, that's a simple way to do this, okay? And again, you can do all kinds of things with this. Uh, you know, if you set two colors, that again would require a bit more advanced stuff, which we won't get into. However, you can do this even with chests, uh, specifically requester chests by setting requests. So you saw on these inserters, we can set stack sizes. Um, however, on chests, on requester chests, you can set uh, request amounts. So again, there's no circuit network connected. So if you see something where there's no option, just make sure you connect it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it can't be connected. It just means that it's not connected. So we'll use green for this and we'll connect it to here. And if you want to connect it to multiple things, you just keep going across. So I clicked Click again, again, and again, and this will connect all four of these in. You can see here how it how it highlights this green uh, green wire. That means these are all interconnected within the same network, the same circuit network. Uh, so we're going to take this, and we can let's actually start here. You can do read contents and or or set requests. Okay, so this is going to set set the logistic request of the chest based on the signal from the circuit network. So now how we can use that is let's say we have a smelter. Let's say we have some sort of like robot based smelter, um, you know, that with train deliveries and such. And we want it to be easily changeable from iron smelting to copper smelting, you know, and we're because the requester chest will will obviously request contents that the robots will bring. Um, if you go in and manually set all these like for iron, or, and then you later want that same smelter design used for copy, you're gonna to have to go in and reset them all. This, if you connect all your requester chests in there, this will allow you to very easily swap them over. So let's start with iron. So you select this, and then you need to actually select an amount for this. So let's just say 200. And all these requesters will now be requesting uh, 200, except I didn't set the requests here. Uh, and also you can copy paste conditions so if you have a ton of chests, you can shift right click and then shift left click and it will copy all these conditions over. 
So now all these are requesting 200. And if you want to change it to copper, it's just as simple as changing this. Instead of changing all the requesters in your setup, you can do this, and these are now all copper. And what, or whatever else you want them to be. So this is a very, very useful way to do this. I've used it multiple times in some of my designs where you just need to very easily change um, a huge amount of something in bulk that all need to be the same thing, okay? Now, let's go over to the logistics network. You can connect this. If you connect a wire uh, to something, uh, either a power pole or some other entity and connect it to a road port, you have two options. You can read logistic network contents or read robot statistics. We won't really go into the robot statistics yet. Uh, essentially what this does is just reads the available robots, uh, the total amount and the available amount for both logistic and construction and outputs their signal as a letter. And you can change this if you want. Uh, I usually leave it on default. And then you can do things based on that, like uh, automatically insert robots when it's below a certain amount. Again, this is very basic information in this video, so I don't want to cover that. But what we can use this for is like another good example would be transferring items between two networks. So you can see here, I've run this wire across power poles. And this, uh, this is just for this pretty much covering distance. Okay, and again, it works the same way. You can just click on one, click to the whoop, click to the next if I'm in range, and there you go. So it connects it. Uh, so what we have is we have another robo port here that is in a separate network. You can see these are not connected. Uh, they're just barely not connected. The inserter is in the one space that's not. So one example, like where I use this, is for getting fuel. If we have a fuel delivery station and then we have smelters or something off to the sides, but we don't want it all one huge network, we can use this. So let's just say this is our fuel drop-off network and we request some fuel. I'm just gonna stick some in here and I'm gonna turn this for now. And it's now dropping it into this other network. What we can do here is wire this inserter up. We could wire it directly to the chest if you want. Um, again, but if you want to do this, you can connect it here. And this is now going to read off of the contents of this. So if we say enable, again, if Sol fuel is less than 50, not 509, 50, you can see this will now work. Again, you could connect it, um, well, actually you couldn't. You couldn't connect it to this chest for what we wanna do, because if you connect it to this chest, this is only going to correspond with the chest itself, okay? It's not gonna correspond with the entire network. And the reason only 38 went in there is because I stole some. Uh, so this is this will you know read the entire logistics network um, from this row port wherever it's connected. You know, if I connect it to this chest, it's only gonna read what's in this specific chest. Okay, so that's a really good way to use this. And then lastly, I wanna show you a little, just a quick thing with lights again, with uh, like accumulators. So you can connect accumulators. If we go ahead and stick a light down and we connect a wire up to it, you can see here, read charge level, and this is gonna output in an A signal. For accumulator, again, you can change this to whatever you want, uh, but we're gonna use A. So now, we can enable, disable, and this is going to allow us to have a light come on if the accumulator hits a certain charge. So if we go ahead and select A, again, because that's what we're outputting, you could select A, and we're going to say, if this is more than 50%, turn the light on, and and it will work. So also what we're gonna do though, is I'm gonna take a power pole here and then I'm gonna take one here. And we're also gonna wire this up to this power pole because now you can actually read the amount. You can see there it's going up. And once it hits 50, this light will turn on, boom. Okay. And I, I connect that power pole because I wanna show you, this is how you can like read information because you can't really tell, like if you click here and you click here, you can't see what the actual level is specifically. There's the energy thing down there, but that's not very specific. Uh, so if you connect then something to a power pole, this will actually give you the exact numbers. Okay, uh, you can also do this with a uh, robo port. So if we just throw down some chests, and I just stick in a bunch of stuff here. And we uh, go ahead and this should actually there we uh, read network contents. That's actually what we want. Uh, so if we do that, this thing will now display everything that's in this network. And you can see here, uh, it's displaying not only the solid fuel, but also the uh, concrete and the inserters that are in these chests. 
So if you just want like a nice visual display by hovering over a power pole, that's how you can do it. And uh, this guy actually was a little broken because I had left it on the robot thing. But when you do do read logistics contents, you can see this guy has now um, stopped. Even if I do put more fuel in there, uh, it won't it won't insert any because the conditions met. So there you go. That's it for this one, guys. I just wanted to cover the very basics of it. Hopefully, this is a good entry level thing uh, for people who are just trying to figure out circuit network in even the very basics, you can do some very useful, uh, helpful things with this. And hopefully next episode will go a bit more in depth into some things. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed this. And if you have any comments or questions, uh, do leave them down below. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you did find it helpful. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.